Hello and welcome to irishracing.com for a new feature we're trying out. It's My Racing Story, where we're going to get a, a, a character from the racing scene to tell us a good story they, they picked up over their, their time in the sport, I suppose. We're going to start off with none better than Pat Healy. Um, Pat, you've been around some of, the, some of the best characters in the game. I'm sure you've got plenty of good story to tell. I, I was thinking about it when you got on to me, Emma, and I was saying, do you know what? I wish I kept a diary going back in the day. Um, great friends, great characters. Starman Norman, Charlie Swan growing up, James Collins, James Jones. I could keep naming them. Jason Titley, David Casey, Connor DeWire, John Short, my God, Brendan Sheridan, Mickey Flynn. I could go on and on and on. Um, great characters. But I think... One of the maddest, and not mad in a bad way, but in a, in a funny way, um, was Paul Carberry. And everybody knows that. And Paul, I had the pleasure of, of being in his company so many times. We went to Spain on holidays uh, a couple of years in a row. It was always great crack and always innocent, no badness ever. But I was trying to think. And the story I love about Paul Carberry is when he was retained to write for Robert Ogden in England and he was over and back a good bit and we were in Limerick City one night and we were in there was a nightclub in Limerick City called Ted's and we were all out Williamson was there and Titley was there and the Bulger was there it was a who's who anyway and Carberry was riding would you believe in Kelso in Scotland the next day and he had to go to Shannon Airport and Anyway, we, by the time we got out of the nightclub, four or five o'clock in the morning, um, Titley got him to Shannon Airport anyway and got him on the plane. And he hit off to, from Shannon to Newcastle to ride in Kelso. And apparently he got to Kelso safe and sound and he was riding for Howard Johnson. And in the way room in Kelso, there's a fireplace with an open fire. And... Cabri gets to the, the races and anyway, as you can imagine, he's hanging and he wears out for the first race, sends out his saddle, he's ready to go and he has about six or seven minutes to spare and he says, do you know what I'll do now? I'll just lie down beside the fire on the bench and the fire is blazing, it is a cold day and of course, what does he do? But he kind of nods off and apparently the horses are at the start circling at the start and Carberry's horse for Howard Johnson is walking around the parade ring still, no sign of Carberry. Someone goes behind the corner, one of the valets, Charlie or the valet, whoever it was, goes behind the corner. There's Carberry asleep on the asleep on the thing. Charlie goes over, wakes him up, says, Carberry, they're gone, they're gone, they're at the start, they're at the start. So Carberry jumps up, grabs his helmet, grabs his whip, sprints into the parade ring, the horse is walking around. There's Howard Johnson standing in the parade and waiting on him. So Carby rushes up to him, and of course, he's putting on his helmet, and he's, he says, what am I going to say? And he turns to Howard, and he says, sorry about that, Howard. I had a fall in the first. The next thing, Howard says, but man, this is the first. This is the first. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, it always makes me laugh because it was typical Carby. Carby would always think quick in his feet. And, of course, I think... He ended up riding a triple on the day that day in Kelso. Great man. Great, great stories. And, um, but they were great characters. And I grew up in an era, and as I said, look, it was more social. And going out with the boys, it, there was always a bit of crack. And I tell you one thing, them fellas, like for, for jockeys, at, fellas at nine stone or nine and a half stone, by Jesus, they, them fellas could drink. And, but... The next morning, up and at it. We were in the stall another night in Jet Carroll's pub. Poor old Eamon Carroll, Lord Emerson, Titley, Casey and Williamson. And we gave it a great rattle. And um, the boys had to beat the Curra. The boys had to beat the Curra the next morning to school for Tom Taff. And they, were, they planned to head off about five o'clock in the morning. And they came, we came out. Eamon eventually threw us out of the pub. Eamon got sick of us and he threw us out about four o'clock. So the boys decided that they wouldn't get into the car and drive straight away. They'd um, sleep on the sleep on the bonnet. So you had you had Titley and Casey on the bonnet of the car, and Williamson on the roof of the car, and there was a frost. 
and they woke up when someone had an alarm and when they woke up at five o'clock in the morning they head up to the car to school for tom taff and they're, they were stuck to the, the car with the with the frost <laughs> but no great men into the car and after the car they went not a bother on them um Connor the wire another great character you could write a book uh of course he's ally at the time john short poor old tony powell lord emerson and paula was a character richard hughes richard hughes of course um ah oh, i loved i loved hanging around with richard hughes when he was a kid we'd go racing and i remember picking him up one day we were going whatever we were going i forget but that time there was no motorways and you would be driving through the towns and he jumped into the pasture seat anyway and he's uh, richard has a laugh that would make you laugh and he was a great young fella full of just always full of energy and, and, and banter and crack and he got into the car and he had a brown paper bag and he looked at me he says oh he says we're going to have some crack today and i said well and he says go on drive on and we're going through the towns and next thing he pulls out of the bag two water pistols full to the brim of water and every time we drove through, he was out the window, squirting out the window. <laughs> People walking up. The, and to see their reactions when they'd get blasted with some water, and they'd be looking up to see, was there rain or what? But here was your man out the window, and he's squirting water, people walking by. Pure and pure banter, pure crack. But uh, great, great friends, great fellas. Um, I could tell, uh, listen, they're all married now, and they all have kids themselves, so you can't tell all the stories. <laughs> Well, they're kind of they're built a bit different though the the men involved in racing but look pat thanks so much um so, some great stories there that a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't have heard of and i'm sure they'll get a great laugh off them so pat look thanks very much for coming on and uh have a good evening